So welcome back and let us proceed. We had started on network theorems and today we are going to do handle example three and more probably another example and finalize on the valent theorems. So the first thing is to remove first the load and the load is at the terminal A, B. When you remove the load in terminal A, B, we talk of removing the load. Removing the load on terminal A, B. We shall have our circuit appearing this way. So then you're going to determine the open circuit voltage by determining the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor, which is in parallel with the terminal AP. So before that, then you have to get, to, to, to get the total impedance that crosses this. And when you look at that, we are going to know that uh, our RT is supposed to be 10 ohms plus 2 ohms plus J3, which is in parallel, which is in parallel with, this one is going to multiply minus J15, because the entire circuit we have here is in parallel with this one, over. 2 ohms plus 10 ohms plus J3 minus J15. This is product of a sum. The entire this we shall add then are 10 ohms. This is be the, the entire uh, total impedance before the current starts flowing. When that one happens, then we shall have this simplification as this is 12 plus J3, 12 plus J3 minus J15 over, this is 12 minus J12, 12 minus J12, and then this is what we're going to add to 10 by simplifying this, I, I recommend that we work on the, we expand or actually convert them into polar so that we have them as a, a single unit, then convert them into Cartesian before we add the 10. So in, when you expand this, you shall have minus J, 12 times 15 minus J 180 plus plus 45 over 12 minus J 12. This is what we're going to add to 10. So we, are, we, are, we should be able to convert this into polar then that is uh, convert that to polar first, then we shall have We shall have 185.53. The angle here is uh, minus 
0.96 divided by 16, 16 point nine seven the angle here is minus forty five. This is what we're going to add our ten ohms. Then whatever follows that you divide the, the magnitudes one into five. This is 10. The angle is, uh, when you're dividing the angles, we dividing the we divide the magnitudes and we subtract the angles. That means we shall have minus 75, minus 6 plus 5, minus 30. This is what we're going to add 10 ohms. Then we convert this back into Cartesian so that we are able to, to add. Or until we, we convert this into polar and we are able to multiply, convert this into Cartesian, into rectangular, we shall have 10. This is 8.66 plus J is minus J minus J 5 minus J 5 plus 10. So this now can now be added. This is supposed to be 18.66 minus J 5. That is the total, total resistance. You can all, all divide this into polar. So this can be that or or nineteen point three one the angle is this is 19.32. The angle is minus 15 degrees ohms. So then we can now get our current from the source I from the source is supposed to be Vs over R of T. The Vs over R of T shall have Vs over R of T as Vs was, was 30 volts angle 30 degrees, we divide by R of T, which is now 19.32, the angle is minus 15. If you divide this, you divide the magnitudes, this is 1.552, the angle is 40 five degrees or that one into polar into Cartesian into rectangular or one point zero nine seven plus J one point zero nine seven zero nine seven four two ohms. So that is the current that is going to be coming from the source, whatever to us I. So when this current gets to this point, it divides, and we're looking for the current that's going to flow through the ten ohm resistor by that. So using the current division formula, using the current 
division formula. The current through the 10 ohm resistor, which is what we require, the current through the 10 ohm resistor, which I'm debating at I sub 10, is supposed to be the opposite arm impedance, which is minus J15 over the total impedance. The total impedance is 2 plus J3 plus 10 minus J15 ohms. This is what we multiply by the incoming current. Incoming current, which I've now got at this point here, is 155.2. 1.552, the angle is 45 degrees amps. This, 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 the current here was supposed to be amps. So that's what we need to know. So the value here, the value in the denominator is already found at our expression down here. At expression, when you simplify it, we are going to get the expression 12 plus minus J12, which is already, which, which is already given in the expression in our, our initial working. Eh? 12 minus J5, you can that, then you shall have the, the upper, the, new, the numerator being equals minus J15. And this is supposed to be 12 minus J12. This is what we times by 1.552. The angle is 45 degrees amps. Convert this into polar for easy working. And for easy working, the magnitude there will be 15. The angle is minus 90. The reason is that we are assuming that the real value here is zero. So by converting the real value into zero and get the, the polar angle, that becomes minus 90. Because any number, tan inverse of the imaginary of a rail is so going to give us infinite eh? or uh, error, math error in the, in the calculators. And that means this thing lies in the margin. It lies in the margin, which I go to get that this is minus 90 because it's, uh, it's of a negative sign. And the other one, we already have the value there as 16.97. The angle there is nine. The angle there is minus forty-five degrees. Then this is what we are going to multiply by one point five five two. The angle is forty-five degrees. When you do that, you divide the magnitude. So fifteen divided by sixteen point. Nine seven. This becomes zero point eight eight. The angle there is forty five minus forty five degrees. This is what we now multiply with 1.552. The angle is 45 degrees. When you look at that, we multiply the product and we sum the angles. And this means that our resultant is supposed to be 0 0.88. Times 1.552. It's 1.3, 1.378, the angle there is zero. This is what? Amps. That is the, um, that is the current that flows through the 10 ohm resistor. So that this is the current that we're referring to as 1.378, the angle is zero amps. So Thevenin's voltage, VTH is supposed to be IR, and that's supposed to be 1.378. The angle is 0 ohms, multiplied by the resistance is 10 ohms. So this becomes 13.78. The angle is 0 volts. 
So from there, then you are going to, we are now done with 7 inch internal resistance. 7 inch internal resistance. So we are going to replace the supply with the internal resistance and we shall have our circuit appearing this way. This is minus J15. This is 10 ohms. We shall have a value as 2 here. 2 ohms. Then have J. 3 ohms, then we shall have our 10 ohms impedance here, 10 ohms. Eh? And we look, we fact, we look, looking in at this point, that's the direction in which we analyze that. We analyze that this is in parallel as in series with this one, and this is also parallel with this one. So we shall have our values as 10 multiply by a minus J15 over 10 plus minus J15 because it's a sum minus J15. That is what is the two combined plus this is what we're going to add to 2 plus J3. Everything here is in parallel with the 10 ohms. And because it is in parallel, we are going to also to repeat the same thing, but in the add, add the denominator. It's 10 minus J15 over 10 minus J15 plus 2 plus J3 plus 10. So that's what we're going to have in the denominator. So this is what will give us our internal resistance. So we just need to get our calculators right and do the mathematics as required from the working. So we are going to, to work on that. So let us convert that the the, uh, the numbers being divided into, into, into polar so that we divide and convert them into rectangular for easy summation and for easy multiplication. So converting that we shall have is 150. The angle is minus 90. Just not a minute. 150, yeah, the angle is minus 90. J minus 90. That one is the angle is 150. The magnitude there is now, we can add that into polar. That is 10. This is 18, the angle 18.02.03. The angle there is minus 56.31 degrees. This is what we add 2 plus J3. 2 plus J3. Everything here is what we multiply by, multiply by 10. And because we already converted that, it becomes very easy for us here. Is 150 over 18.03. This is the 150, the angle is minus 90. This is the angle here is minus 56.31. Plus 2 plus J3 plus 10. We divide this so that we convert that into Cartesian again. And that one implies that we shall have 150 divided by 
is 8.32. The angle there is 33 minus 33.69 this is plus plus 2 plus j3 over everything also is 8.3 to the angle is minus 33.69 plus 2 plus j3 plus 10 but the numerator here is multiplied by 10, and this is going to sum that. We change, this, the, change the numerator into, poor, into Cartesian so that you can be able to add. Then whatever follows is you shall have that into rectangular. It's This is 6.92 minus J 4.62 plus 2 plus J 3. Now it becomes easy to multiply because you are just able to add. The other denominator is also. 6.92 minus j 4.63 plus 2 plus 3 j 3 plus 10. When you add this, then we're going to add 6.92 plus 2 is 8.92. We'll have 8.92 minus 4j plus 3 plus minus j 4 plus J3, we're going to get minus J1.62. Over <coughs> 6.92 plus 2 plus 10, we're going to get is 18. Because this is 8, that becomes 18.92. Minus J4.63 plus 3, we shall get minus J, 1.6, this is supposed to be 6, 3, 6, 2, not 6, 3, 6, 2, 1.62. 6, 2. This is what multiply by 10. When you look at that critically, change this into, into change that into, polar so that you can multiply directly. So <coughs> we change that into polar again. This is 8.92. We shall have this as 9.06, 9.06. The angle there is minus 10, minus 10.3. This is multiplied by 10. And uh, shall also have the same thing here, so that we're going to divide this 18, change that 18 into polar. This becomes 18.989. The angle there is minus 4.89. So you divide this, you shall get 90.6. The angle is minus 10.3 degrees. Then you shall have that as 18. 0.989 divided by my angle is minus 
9. We divide that, it follows that we are going to divide the magnitudes. It's 90.6 divided by 18.989. We shall have 4.77. And the angle, we shall be able to add minus 10, it's minus 10.3, minus minus 4.89, minus 4.89. You'll have minus 5.41 degrees. So this is the Thevenin's voltage. That is the Thevenin's. This, this was the not on standard resistance. Not this, so this is a not on standard resistance. So we have been able to get that. Then this is what we are going to get. now to get the Thevenin's voltage. This is, you know, you know this is not on standard resistance, whatever I refer to as RTH. And because it's the Internal resistance is normally prevented by small r, RTH. So from there, we draw the Norton's equivalent circuit to draw the, the Thevenin's, not the Norton, the Thevenin's equivalent circuit. So we're drawing the Thevenin's equivalent. We're going to use the Thevenin's voltage as the source. So this is. 13.78, the angle was 0 volts. Then we shall have the internal resistance, which we are having here as 4.77, the angle is minus 5.41 ohms. Then we shall replace our impedance for AB. This was 10 ohms, and this was J6. That's the circuit we're going to have. So it's, a, it's wise to convert this into, into rectangular so that it can be able to add these. Eh? So the equivalent, this of, the equivalent to that of a rectangular must be This, this equivalent value is 4.748, and, and the angle is minus J 0 0.44, no, the, the imaginary lines. So that we shall have this, then we shall have the current. From there, the current, current, current through AB current through AB, this is the point AB, whatever you have been asked, current through AB is supposed to be VTH over RTH plus R of L. And this shall have this as 13.78, the angle is zero, then Whatever shall have there is 4.748 minus J 0 0.4 minus J 0 0.449 plus 10 ohms plus J 6. So we add 6, we add 6 plus that shall get 5 point something and this shall get 14. So we shall have 13.78, the angle is zero. And the denominator we shall have here is 14, 14, 14 14.749, plus J. That one is plus J 5.551. Plus J. 5.551 5 
ohms. You convert this into polar so that we have our 13.78, the angle is zero. Then convert that into polar for easy division. 14.748. This becomes 15.75. The angle there is 20. So when we divide this, when we divide this, we shall able to we are able to get thirteen point seven eight divided by fifteen point seven five. We shall I get zero point eight seven nine eight seven five? The angle is minus 20 degrees arms. That is the answer for the question that was being asked. So it's advisable that any time you are dividing complex numbers, you know, change them into polar. Any time you are multiplying, also change them into polar. But any time you are adding, let them be in rectangular. It's normally advisable for easy working and for easy flow. So that's what the question was asking us. A bit lengthy, but it, it, it entails nearly everything we need to understand concerning the complex reform, uh, concerning the complex numbers and complex reform as it is. So that's uh, so going to, we are going to have the final example. So let, let us have a final example on this. One of the things I'll advise you is that anytime you are given a circuit, kind of look at the supply voltages. When you look at this, uh, they are adding, they are not subtracting because they are, they are going the same direction. So we shall have our supply, our, our current. We first, as obvious, you have to remove the load. When removing the load, we shall have our circuit appearing this way. And this is where we remove the load. So this is 10 volts, this is 5 ohms. This is 2 ohms, and this is 20 volts. Then turn the current through the load, which is across whatever is connected in parallel, the load. So current is supposed to be the bigger voltage. When you have this, we shall we're supposed to have V over RT. The V over RT voltages are appears to be in series and they're adding. Eh? So this is 20 plus 10 volts over the resistance is 2 plus 5 ohms. When you have that, then this becomes 30 over 7 ohms. And this gives us the current. This comes 4.285 amps. So Thevenin's voltage, VTH, is supposed to be a bigger voltage minus smaller voltage drop. And the hint is this. Eh? When uh, we are subtracting the hint is this. Eh? When a larger resistor is connected in series with a bigger voltage, with a bigger voltage, 
then Z turbines is supposed to be the bigger voltage minus the bigger voltage drop. So that's the, the hint. And because the, we are supplying the, the volt, the smaller resistor is connected to the bigger voltage drop, you're subtracting the smaller voltage drop. So you shall have V7 here as being, because the bigger voltage of the circuit is 20 volts, minus the smaller voltage drop, you have now to determine. The current is this, the current, the current times the smaller resistor, you shall have as 4.285 multiplied by two. That shall give us the thevenous voltage. So this is 20 minus 8.571. We shall have 11.428 volts. After we determine that, we now look in and determine the Thevenin's internal resistance. So R TH, Thevenin's internal resistance is supposed to be, the two circuits are in parallel, we shall have our circuit first appearing this way. So this is five, this is two ohms. So RTH implies that we shall have two times five over two plus five. It's supposed to be 10 over seven. This is 1.4285. When you have that, then you shall have not only uh, several in school and circuit, you shall have three in school and circuit, you shall have the circuit being drawn, with VTH being the source, this is the RTH. And the other one is connected is our load six ohms. The RTH we have determined is 1.4285 ohms. So our I of TH, I'm the current through the load, is supposed to give in a voltage VTH. Our VTH is given as 11.428 volts, 11.428 volts divided by 1.4285 ohms plus 6 ohms. And this becomes 11.428 over 7.4285 ohms, which gives us the answer being close to becomes 1.54 amps. That's how the is simple. So we are done with the first theorem, which is the Venus theorem. The next theorem we're going to, to have is the Norton's theorem. And it's, it simply applies it, but in this case, the Norton's theorem as we shall be able to be rolling over through the, the, the theory, we shall be able to realize that in this case, our source now becomes the short circuit current. We now term the short circuit current. So as we roll over, let us go through the Norton's theorem. Okay.